Okay. Hello. Okay. So, uh, another uh, project after a whole course. It would be good if you give a brief introduction. De de, uh, uh, what have you gone through? What are you doing right now? And then we'll have a market project discussion. Pe aate. Okay. So, my name is Muhammad Hadi. I'm 11 years old. I'm currently doing Python level 1. Before that, I did Scratch level 1 and 2. And it was nice and easy in scratch and they taught us like simple concepts and they were just easy to understand they explain and when you like make use those com concepts you can make really complex stuff and good stuff mm -hmm. you you may even at level one you made a really amazing game uh but uh, i'm excited i'm excited to see k level two came the kya hoga. so uh, okay. i think you can share your screen we'll talk about your project and we'll take it from there share the screen Hmm. Uh, this is the game I made, Food Fighter. Uh, should I full screen this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think yes, that's fine. It's a two. It's a two-player fighting game. This, this is like an intro, and this is the start button. Can you hear the music? I can. Okay. But. I, I think the music is a little low because maybe you're not sharing your audio uh, when you're okay, sharing. Okay, I can. Uh, there's a volume. That's exactly why I made a volume thing. Okay. It's okay. But while sharing the screen, did you click on share audio? Uh, let me. I don't think I did. Let me. I think you should do that again. Okay, and I'll the, stop. At I'm the bottom gonna... left corner, you get a button. Ah, yes. Audio. I see it. <clears throat> Check on the there is the, and this time I'll turn it down. The stage select, I mean the character select, the select the character here. Oh, I'm just the volume. I think it's the volume so I can speak. So this is the character selecting place. There are only like two working characters. Mm -hmm. When you like select the character, it, it becomes green and out, and it also says the name so you know which one you selected. This, this one is a french fry with big muscles. This is a lace pack. This is a burger. Okay. And this, and this is a Coke bottle. They all have like unique attacks. I haven't filled the guidebook in yet. This is the stage selection. There's only one stage at the moment. The versus, versus Round one. Fight. It's like the first to win two rounds is the winner of the match. Should I um should I um, make one character win a round and then the other one, or should we just make Okay, this seems like the most so that so we don't take that much time. I can show you the unique move. Also, every character has a unique move. The French try when you click a left and right arrow at the same time, it does this attack. And when you click up and down arrow at the same time, it does this attack. And when you click down arrow, it does the shockwave attack. This has too much force, so it takes time to do it. And for the lay pack, it can also shoot a projectile, it will shoot a lay ship. And this is the health bar, and it's for the press fly. So every time it gets hit, it takes the health bar like goes down. And every time the friend, the ship pack gets hit, it also takes damage. The French fry also has a kick attack and a dash attack and a fireball attack. You can also like combo it like while jumping and then do the fireball attack. So should I start fighting? Yes, I think it's good. Uh, show us a few of the uh, fight moves. What? Yes, show us a little, uh, a few of the fight moves. That's that's good. Okay, fight moves. Oh, you can! Oh, you can! 
I think last time I I also had a Street Fighter one game. This is the second party. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I must have told him I had like two final projects with Street Fighter one. This Street Fighter one I got. Mm-hmm. It is. Okay. Oh. And then round two. Round two. Round two. I, 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 I haven't made one for final round. It is just final round. It's just round two still. <laughs> That's the thing I have. Okay, I'll just finish this round and when you win there's a victory animation so I'm going to show that. Mm-hmm. Maybe after that I'll just uh, show it inside the code the victory animation so you don't have to um see the other players and that. Uh, And a new round has started just now. What? Uh, a new round of this uh, match has has started just now. Yeah, that's why the health bars have reset. Oh, you can. Okay, I'm going to uh, like try to finish the round. Now I think the game just just playing by itself. Now I think he got stuck like the down arrow key got stuck. Well, okay. it's gonna be a little challenge now. I'll have to just spam this or that. Then. Okay, really unexpected. Bag of chip wins. The victory animation. We do the summer song, and then. Okay, now I'll get on with the code. I guess. This is this is pretty amazing. I I I love the animations, and that must have taken you quite a lot of time. Yeah, it took seventy frames for the this one, and for the French fry. Its victory animation was one hundred and eighteen frames. Costumes, I mean. Yeah. Wow. And the Grinchy is the winner. Really well done. Thanks. Wow. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, I could probably like not even focus for uh, completing this whole uh, punching and the crack on the screen thing, but you were able to retain your focus through that. And how many frames is this crack? Like this crack is um, I think it's um, it's like uh, twenty frames or maybe ten. I don't remember. It's. Hmm. Because the, the progression of it was really good. It started from a dot and then it grew outside. So that was really uh, amazing to see. And and the I names. Think... Who came up with these names? Was it all by yourself, Renchi? And... I came up with them by myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. So walk me through this thing. Like, how did you come up with this idea? And what what? Uh, was it uh, clearly in your head that this is exactly what you wanted to make or was there like a phase where you were thinking of something else and then you shifted to this or like how did the idea evolve? I wanted to like, I used to play fighting games at that time a lot. So I just thought, mm, why not make my own? Mm-hmm. But I, could, I, I couldn't think of what to make it on. I first thought of just adding regular humans, but then my dad gave me the idea, why not just add food? And then I was just like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so food fight, I mean, it's it's been uh, here for some time. Uh, we've all had fun on that, but uh, uh, have you played Street Fighter? Yes, I have. Okay. I got, that's, why, that's where I got the name for Food Fighter. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, there were a couple of things that I noticed uh, during the gameplay because I was obviously like looking at it from a player's perspective. So um, in, I think the first round when the KO, uh, when the knockout happened, I don't think it was very obvious who won. 
because uh, so I know that Frenchie's health was uh, decreasing and obviously like the baggage chips would have won, but uh, it doesn't indicate anywhere in that KO that uh, baggage chips won. But eventually at the end, it does say that baggage chips won. And another thing was that there is no like round number mentioned on the screen once, like they've done one round of fighting on the other round, because that does help a player to see that, okay, this is the final round. I have to make it like either I can draw the battle or I uh, am just like already one step ahead, uh, then I need to make sure that I win this. Uh, or uh, if, because if it's a three round thing and you've already won two rounds, then you, you are, you've already won. But if it's like a one and one on, on, on both sides, then the third round uh, is like really very crucial for any player. To, to make it uh, uh, to make it meaningful that they, they must win that round. So these are maybe like a couple of things that uh, uh, that that could still uh, that's uh, be improved into this. And I think you still haven't shared it on your profile. It, I do see the share button over there. Yeah, because it's not fully finished. Okay, I, I get the idea. But even then, even now, it's like a really amazing project that I, I feel like it's very original. Did you find any other food fighting games over here? Uh, no, I just made the characters and everything by myself. Uh, there were some food fighter games. Yeah, there were some food fighting games as well. Mm -hmm. Like made before me. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if you share it, then many people would have uh, similar comments that there should be round numbers, there should be like who won, and uh, maybe ideas for other arenas to fight in, but uh, even the current arena and, and is pretty good and uh, uh, like a symbolic of uh, having an arena in uh, Canada is the Tim Hortons. So <laughs> how, how did you come up with that? It's cause I just want I just wanted to make it food team and everyone likes um restaurants and stuff like that. Tim Hortons is really famous right now, so I just mm -hmm. decided to make it there. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And uh, what about the other one a single player that was coming in from the right side of the screen after every few seconds and dropping something? What was that? Was that was just um at the part of the background animation. He was just. Uh, or drinking coffee and then he just got surprised that he just dropped it like this in anime. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, I did have a hunch that it would be coffee. So another really amazing thing that I see in this is uh, combos. You already, you also have combos that uh, unlock uh, special moves. Like for example, for the lace pack where you new jump and then do that fireball attack, then it just you it's really easily you can just hold it and it goes on to the player like forever yeah mm -hmm. all right and uh can you like uh, show us that part of the program because in my mind i feel like it would be a little bit tricky i'm thinking of it in terms of a few conditional statements uh but then if this is being done with a lot of delay then it makes it really easy to execute that combo but if and this is Oh, okay, you can continue. Okay, no, uh, you can talk about the combo moves and then I think I'll help, I'll understand it a little better. This is like when W and D fresh it is like a forward jump. So, in while it's fall in those time, well, like when it's in when it's going up in the air, then I use the if A and D, if A and S, A and S is like the code for it turning into a fireball while like it it gets the opportunity to do that attack while it's like in the air so then mm -hmm. if ANS is pressed then it just go it turns into that fireball midair and just goes crashing down mm -hmm. so we do see that happening uh as a feedback for us when we press w and d it does it, it starts to go up by change y by five that's the block that makes it go up and while it's doing that we have the opportunity to press a and s yeah Okay, all right. So that's a really good feedback for us that we can see it happening and then we have the opportunity because once that repeat loop is done and we press A and S at that point, then it won't happen. 
Mm, yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good feedback of it as well. And I could also see that the effect of one player has a really good effect on the other one as well. Like when the Frenchie does the, uh, what, what's that? Uh, but, um, I forgot thing. It's called a ketchup you can. <laughs> like a show you can. I just named it ketchup you can. Ketchup you can. Okay. And, and once that uh, has its effect on the other opponent, the opponent also flies up. Yeah, it goes flying up with it, so it just deals a lot of damage. The, sh okay. the ketchup can thing doesn't do that much damage, it just makes quite costume. But since the player goes up with it, it deals a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, like so, as soon as the player is about to land onto it and attack, he can just do that and it just knocks mm -hmm. them out. And is that done through broadcast? Yeah, that's done through a board broadcast. Okay. Like, this is the, I think, damage. Yeah, it's the damage. This no, this is I think something else. Yeah, I but the, there's a damage script where it goes flying into the air when it receives mm -hmm. the and catch up. Uh, uh, sure you can attack. Yeah. Hmm. I so, think uh, for such a large pro project, how do you keep it organized? Does it uh, make it difficult for you to find a thread like it is like even now? Um, that where is that thread for uh, the friend, uh, the bag of chips rolling over because of the ketchup pukin or whatever? <laughs> oh yeah, there was one uh, time where the bag of chips, uh, right, uh, pro right before the meeting began, I realized there was a problem that as soon as bag of chips lands on the floor and turns into a fireball, it sometimes goes all the way to the edge and whatever button you press is still like that. So then I just realized that um they're like normal y position is negative 127 in the battlefield mm -hmm. but sometimes when it lands as a fireball is it, it was negative uh 126 so mm -hmm. then i this is where it was like if it's below 127 then it had gone back to normal but then it was not working so then i just realized that and i just changed it to 100 mm -hmm. but it, i put these a lot in the, every place so i just find every code which is the same and just fix that glitch until i find the code which is actually causing mischief hmm. okay and, and this entire thread what is what is this handling is that handling one specific thing or like is it a mixture of multiple uh, features like this um, entire block that you are this at. entire like loop thing yeah yes. okay like it's handling all of the like inputs and attacks and stuff the character can do. Like okay. even the moving script, it has all of that. I wanted to like use like not make too many blocks because in Food Fighter One, I just made uh, the forever loop for a yeah, separate. But it used to move smoothly, but uh, the code was too much and I couldn't tell where is what. So it was hard to find which one. But now there's just like one big thread where you can find them all in. Okay. Like, all right. one. And and this is a uh, food fighter two. You had a food fighter one. Yeah, in there. yeah I have a one as well. Okay, I think we should take a look at that. <laughs> can can and we... it's not that good. Okay, that, that that's fine. But if you can open it up in a new tab again, then we'll come back to this one too. And uh, yeah. I do believe that in scratch level two, we do cover creating lists. Yeah. Uh... I think I used I started working on the Food Fighter project like I think halfway through the term of Scratch Level Two. So and um, I find lists a little hard to use as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I can understand. And if there's like no need of that, if that doesn't make your program a little bit better, then of course there's no need for like going over it because um uh, I think it can be handled really well with these like multiple threads that if you have one character, it would have a separate uh, set of uh, uh, animation then and you choose another character that has a separate set of animation there was a really good interaction on the uh, player selection part as well once you hover over any of the uh, players that you're selecting it had an arrow like an inclusion yeah. on around it can you show us that uh, oh, the code for that the code and the costumes as well, because uh, I think for anybody to make a, 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 any sort of game, yes, this is a really simple thing that you add these uh, 
uh, corners on the whole sprite, and but it really improves the experience a lot. That you get to see that the game is responding uh, to like wherever the mouse is, and you're you're thinking of choosing a character, and the game is uh, letting you know that yes, I acknowledge that you're. Uh, choose, trying to choose this character, but when you click it, then it then it's going to get selected. Um, yeah. Uh, but does it give you any feedback in that way that uh, which character is already selected now? How does it show? That? Yeah, it does. It you hear the like voice it says the name of the character, then right. Mm. That's how you know it's selected, and that character appears on the side as well. Mm. But can you go from the first costume to the second costume? I think there's a change even there, right? When you select it, it becomes green, the outline. Mm -hmm. That's also a really good indication. And the voices had, I think, a techno feature with, with them. Yeah, I made it robot kind of as well. Can, can you show me how, uh, uh, what, how many uh, recordings are in this entire program? I think it's Reggie. just one recording, but they're different for everyone. Like, this is the baggy chip one. Baggy chip. It's my favorite one. <laughs> and who recorded these audios? Me. That that must have been funny to go. Berry. <laughs> I mean, it's dramatic, but to make a really good experience of this game, you do need that sort of you could say flair into. You can't just say bagger chips, so you have to say bagger chips. <laughs> <laughs> and then, can you, can you tell me about the techno uh, feature? How did you add that into it? I use this robot thing and then it be <laughs> Are there any other features into this that will make like uh, uh... I use slower to make my voice more deeper. <laughs> Hmm. And and uh, there there should be probably like an echo type of thing that uh, uh, if you are let's say fighting in an arena in a cave, then maybe it could it, its actions could have like the Hadoken could have an, hmm. uh, a sound feature that it would echo around the whole cave and that could maybe improve the ambience or the experience of uh, that arena. But maybe we could do that with any external tools. Like there are so many outside tools to modify sounds. Uh, just like we found remove.bg to remove the background from any sprites. Uh, similarly, do you know about maze generator? Uh, image generator, the Bing one, right? The Bing image generator. Um, I'm not sure about that, but can you go to a new tab and open up maze? Yeah, there is an AI. I is it the AI image generating one where you just write in no, a prompt and it generates not, an image. Not the AI image generator, just a maze generator. So can you go maze. to a new tab and search maze generator dot something? No, just simply search maze generator, and I think it is dot net. But if you search maze generator, it will give us the uh, like the right website for that. Yes, the, the first one. So another a student introduced me to this, that if we're creating something like a sort of a Pac-Man type of thing, then we have to first think of a type of maze as well, that which maze are we going to use in uh, this Pac-Man level? Uh, so over here, you can tell it that it's supposed to be a square cell type of maze and uh, inner width should be maybe like, uh, two cells, or uh, or it could be bigger as well, so that it would have more movable parts around it. So it helps you to create a maze really quickly. So similarly, there should be websites outside out there who give you these other microservices that uh, could turn uh, your audio into some sort of other um, uh, type of audio as well. Like this is a techno one that's really good. Uh, but maybe it could have like a Disney cartoonish type of sound as well. So that if there is maybe like a Mickey Mouse type of character in your fight, then it would have uh, uh, his type of audio uh, 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 announcing his, his or her name. So uh, I think maybe we can explore some other audio features in, in another round and uh, import that into our game too. So, uh, but besides that, uh, with all these features, we can obviously do a lot more too. Uh, can you show me the animations of the uh, uh, Frenchie? And uh, like huh? the animation, like of his attacks. Yes, of his attack, especially like the uh, ketchup. What what do you call it? Ketchup. 
the ketchup shamishu and the ketchup you can think i just made two costumes it switches between the circle of my mm -hmm. so once this animation plays uh, we have to switch its costumes but then we also have to make it move up a little bit hmm. it's like switching between those costumes uh, oh and this is also the sound so you can i <laughs> use the sound the sounds are here so you can and this is a punch sound i think <laughs> And he gets hurt. How did, how did he come up with the punch sound? <laughs> I just downloaded that one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's yeah. But you know, once uh, in movies, when they shoot these out of uh, these type of sounds, um, like there's a video about the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball. Have you seen that? the no. animated movie it, it's a really good one the guy creates a machine that can generate any type of weather uh that would have food raining down so maybe uh yeah so maybe a rain of hamburgers or like a snowfall of ice cream so uh in uh, the animators in that uh movie they would take sounds from all sorts of other places to match the sound of like how a hamburger would fall uh what, what that would uh sound like or maybe uh, so, so some other things too uh, so they find similar sounds in like other places so uh walking sound just a tap on the a tap on the table or some something else so it I mean, for uh, sounds like this, you could also find some like audio uh, resemblance in some other sort of uh, activities. Um, yeah, can you show me where uh, is the animation for like making it move up and uh, changing its costume between like- Okay, one... yeah, I'll zoom out so it's easy for me to find that. And so have sorry. you tried that other uh, uh, block that, uh, like there's a function over here, you can right click on the white part. Oh, yeah, comment. Like, uh, not, not a... comment, but right click on an empty part and we'll see uh, there are some options that clean up blocks. Oh, there are 312. Yeah, uh, the clean up blocks, uh, I think, puts all the blocks in an... Uh, in a in a vertical form and then you can maybe find those easily and then obviously comments would help a lot if uh and when you share this then you could have some comments into this because i know other people would want to remix it and create maybe if if this is a food fighter game maybe somebody else would want to create a stationary fighting game where they would have two markers or like two erasers and a stapler fighting with each other or what what, what other ideas could we think about that would have like a food fighting type of thing stationary fighters and then electronics fighter two mobile phones against one tablet a flat screen tv animal fighter Animal fighter, furniture fighter, a sofa against like a work desk, <laughs> a, a bed against like a wardrobe. That That's a really good idea. I think maybe this is how uh, a lot of Disney movies like came up with their ideas. Uh, th there's this meme that goes around Disney thought that what if cars had feeding, feelings? They created the movie Cars. What if planes had feelings? They created the movie Planes. What if feelings had feelings? They created the movie Inside Out. So then they created the characters for our emotions, anger and uh, sadness and happiness. And like, so there's a movie around that too. Okay, we were talking about the animation. If you found that? Yeah, I found it. This is the one. If left and right arrow clicked. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must have taken out some other code. I'll just take out this code mm -hmm. only, I guess. I'll you don't have to take it out. I can just take a look at it. Okay, but this is what it looks like. If mm -hmm. left and right arrow click, then it'll do. So you can... It'll switch a random between this. Like, okay, I'll bring it out in the edge. This is like it's switching to this, and then this, and then this is going. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Like That's your so you can... It's like randomly switching when it'll punch mm -hmm. you there and right there. Oh. Yes, so it that plane. Okay, okay, okay. So you have a catch. Uh, you have a costume change before the broadcast, and as soon as that happens, you go into the uh, repeat loop, and then you have a costume change after that too. Hmm. Hmm. And then because you have to keep changing the costumes. 
Yeah, and if it's touching this and while it's in the air, it will be broadcasting the damage. Mm, yeah, that that makes sense. Could there have been another way of reducing these number of blocks? Like we could switch costume. You, you, I see that you're using two switch costume blocks. One of them you have to do repeatedly, and then the other one, uh, uh, you just you just need to do that one time before the broadcast. So I'm just thinking if there could be just like one way of doing this. Because if, I you, just want to <laughs> because if you put the broadcast inside the repeat loop, then uh, the broadcast would keep on happening and it could keep on playing the other sound too. This is the ketchup you can damage. Okay. Um, mm. This one's the damage. The one inside the repeat is the damage. So that like if while it's like going up, if it's like touching the player to bag a chip, then while it's like going up, then it'll do the damage and also while it's going down that's mm -hmm. what makes it super overpowered even when you're landing you can deal mm -hmm. damage mm -hmm. okay you've talked about uh how many frames of animations were in this project uh if somebody wanted to create a really amazing project like this one uh do you know how much time it took you to complete this um i remember it was a lot like at least a month or something <laughs> It, and, and I, started it, I started it like maybe at the end of like right at before scratch level two like at the end of scratch level one i was working on mm -hmm. this and, and it was totally worth it so if you were to like give a tip to somebody like you a scratcher out there who is thinking of creating a game maybe at like a level one or level two what would you tell them that uh, some, something that helped you while making this Variables are very good. <laughs> like the, I, most of this was made, built around variables. Mm -hmm. How many variables are there? Uh, this many. Okay, nice. Frenchy wins, bagged chips, P one Big Mac, uh, Big Mac. Yeah, th these these are pretty good. Round, I think I made for I I I'll rename it to P two bagged. Uh, it's not Should... typing. Oh. P2 bagged bagged chips. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Forget about the whole. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, so that's where we are going to end uh, this presentation. I see that there are some placeholders for the viewers. They are also like good at the moment, but they could maybe like at a later time turn into something else as well. But there are obviously higher priority items here. So uh, good luck for completing this. And once you do, I would like to like have a link of it in my Google chat because I would want to play it. I mean, this is this is so good that we can use it uh, at like a, a gaming event in our like uh, in, our, in our work routine, uh, just to like have like a bonding moment with our team members. So it would also be really fun to do that. Uh, so I would love a link for this because otherwise I won't be able to play it. So as soon as you finish it, you click on that share button because uh, it will also increase your views of this project and uh, maybe you'll get a lot of likes and comments and suggestions for how you can improve this game. So or I could just download it and then email it to you maybe. That's also fine, yes. Uh, but you know, there's a stage about becoming a scratcher where they unlock uh, cloud variables for you and uh, unlock another feature where you can have your own studio in the scratch uh, environment. Uh, that will only happen once you start interacting with other scratchers as well. Take a look at their projects, start commenting and like maybe give them suggestions, maybe remix a few of their projects. So that could be another way of uh, learning something more on scratch or another way could be to try turbo warp so uh, but otherwise yes do uh download it and send it to me i'd love to play this yeah next i think i'm gonna make the characters face each other i with the left and right rotation mm -hmm. style yeah 
Okay, that's going to be amazing. So thank you for uh, displaying this and showcasing this. It was really nice uh, talking to you and uh, uh, looking at this project. Uh, I, I can't wait to play it. Uh, okay, thank you. Lapis. Okay, Lapis. We'll see you later. See you later. <laughs>